Hello again. This is the second video to go over the oxidation number method in balancing redox reactions. If you have missed the first one, please make sure to click on the link in the description below to check it out. This time we're going to balance something slightly more difficult. We have here Fe, which is iron, plus Cl minus, which is chlorine, to produce HFeCl4 and H2 in an acidic medium. We will write out the reactants and the products on the left and the individual elements on top. Now I have purposefully left a space here because we will see that we're going to have to add something here in a moment. So we will fill in the table with the oxidation numbers as usual. Each Cl is minus one and we have four of them. So that gives us minus four plus one from the hydrogen that will give us minus three. So Fe must be plus three. Now we get to H2. What we notice here is that there seems to be a change in the oxidation number of hydrogen, which means that hydrogen must also be participating in this redox reaction. What we will do is we will add a water to the reactant side so that we can have it reduced to H2. And we know that there is probably a change in the oxidation number because H2 is a zero charge, which means each H must have a charge of zero as well. And normally H has an oxidation number of plus one. So it is highly likely that an H2O was reduced to H2. But then you ask, why don't we see water on the reactant side of the equation? Well, it is because water will be canceled out in the last step, and we will see that in just a moment. Once we have filled out the rest of the table and the change in the electrons for each element, we will rewrite the reactants including water and write out the total change in the number of electrons for each reactant. Then we will write down the full equation again. Remember that in order to balance the number of electrons given away and received by the reducer and the oxidizer, we will swap these numbers and write them as the coefficient of the other compound. So we will have three H2O and two Fe's. Next, we will balance the non-hydrogen and non-oxygen elements. And we will write a two here for the two Fe on the left side and an eight here for the eight Cl's on the right side. Now I know that I said that we will balance anything but hydrogen and oxygen. But because hydrogen from water is being reduced, we will balance the hydrogens also at this stage. So we will write three beside H2, which is what H2O becomes after being reduced on the right side to balance out the six H's of water as the oxidizer on the left hand side. Now note that we're not counting the two H's in the HFeCl4 because those oxygens are in fact not the H that are participating in the redox reaction. Next, we will balance the charge. The left side is minus eight, while the right side is zero. So we will need to add eight H plus to the left-hand side. We will now balance the overall H's in the reaction. So we have 14 on the left side in total and eight on the right side. And therefore, we will need to add three H2Os to the right side. A quick check of oxygen counts and we will see that this equation is balanced. So we will end up with two Fe plus eight Cl minus plus three H2O plus eight H plus producing 2HFeCl4 plus 3H2 and 3H2O. But we're not done yet. Remember earlier we said 
that H2Os will be cancelled out? Well, this is indeed what is happening. You can see that we have three H2Os on both sides of the equation. So we will cancel those out and be left with 2Fe, 8Cl- and 8H plus reacting to produce 2HFeCl4 and 3H2. Next, we're going to look at one that is in a basic medium. We will list out all of the reactants and the products on the left side and the individual elements at the top of the table. And we carefully fill out the oxidation number table. CN minus, which is cyanide, has a minus one charge. N, being a group 15 element, has a minus three charge, so C must be plus two. Then that means Fe must be plus two to give an overall charge of minus four. Similarly, hydroxide has a minus one charge and we have three of them, so Ce must be plus three in order to end up with an overall charge of zero. C is plus four in CO3 with an overall charge of minus two, while N is plus five in NO3 with an overall charge of minus one. And we will write out the change in the electron count for each element. Then we will rewrite the reactions so that we can tally up the total change in the electron count for each reactant. So Fe is plus one, while C is minus two, and N is plus eight. And we have six sets of Cn, so we will multiply this whole thing by six. This gives us minus 61. Ce is just plus one. We will now rewrite the equation with the swapped numbers of change in electron count as the coefficients. First, we will balance the non-oxygen and non-hydrogen elements. Next, we will balance the charge we have to be very careful when counting because of these big numbers. Because this reaction takes place in a basic medium, we will add OH- instead of H+, like we did in the first example. Then we will balance the hydrogens and add waters to the right side. Lastly, we will check that the equation is balanced by counting the oxygens. And we see that the equation is indeed balanced. So our final balanced equation turns out to be 1 FeCn6 4 minus plus 61 Ce4 plus plus 258OH minus to produce 61 CEOH3 plus 1 FeOH3 and 6 CO3 2 minus plus 6 NO3 minus and 36 waters. This following example we're going to see is going to be a little bit tricky, but we will see how we can solve this. It is again in an acidic medium. We will start by listing out all of the reactants and the products on the left and all of the individual elements at the top of the table. Then we will fill out the table with the oxidation numbers by looking at each compound and figuring out the oxidation number of each element. We see that AS, arsenic, in AS2S3 will be plus three N and NO3 minus will be plus five.
and AS in H3 ASO4 will also be plus 5. Then we will rewrite the reactants and count up the total change in the number of electrons for each reactant. We will write out the equation and swap these numbers and write them as the coefficients. Then we will balance the non-hydrogen and non-oxygen elements. We'll end up with 3As2S3 and 10 NO3 minus 6 H3 ASO4 and 10 NO. But then we notice that we have eight sulfurs on the right hand side and nine on the left hand side. So how can we balance the sulfurs in this case? Well, what we're going to do is use the same trick that we've done before when we try to balance out the change in the electron count. We will multiply each of the compounds by 8, which is the number of sulfurs on the right side. And then we will multiply S8 by the number of sulfurs on the left side, which is 9. So then we get 24 AS2S3, 80 NO3 minus, 48 H3 ASO4, 80 NO, and 9 S8. And now we can continue balancing the charge, the hydrogens, and oxygens like we normally would. So in the end, we will have 24AS2S3 plus 80NO3 minus plus 80H plus plus 32H2O producing 48H3ASO4 plus 80NO plus 9S8. Here is one last example to show you that oxidation numbers don't have to be whole numbers. I'll leave this one for you to try and balance. I hope this has been helpful. If you have any questions, please feel free to comment below.